Well, hey guys, I'm a board certified dermatologist and in this video, we're gonna be covering 10 reasons why your face is red and what to do about it. Now, there are more than 10 possible reasons for facial redness, but for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna cover 10. Number one is seborrheic dermatitis. This is a pretty common skin condition. I know a lot of you guys out there deal with it. It consists of these red patches, sometimes around the nose, on the forehead, really anywhere on the face. They're kind of greasy, tends to happen in people with a tendency towards oily skin, and they're covered with kind of scaliness, yellow scale, can be kind of flaky. This is a chronic skin condition, it comes and goes, it flares with stress if you get run down or get sick, and it can flare seasonally, especially in the winter time. What can you do about it? Well, this condition is aggravated by a little yeast that lives on our skin that actually is the same cause of dandruff called malassezia. And anti-dandruff shampoos help calm down the inflammatory response to this yeast. And you can use these on your face. The way to use them is to lather them to the affected areas of your face. Let that lather sit on there for a few minutes and then rinse it off. You also can use face washes with salicylic acid. And of course, see a board certified dermatologist because there are some prescription treatments that can likewise help as well. Number two is post-inflammatory erythema. This is persistent redness that happens as a result of healing acne. The inflammatory response in acne is so robust, it can cause blood vessel dilation and a lot of little blood vessel changes beneath the skin that remained for a prolonged period of time, even after the acne is under good control. This happens in acne that is often cystic and very inflammatory. The redness varies in intensity from faint light pink to a deep red, and it's not just the face. If you had acne on your chest or your back or your neck, that can heal with post-inflammatory erythema. The good news is with time, it will fade provided the acne is treated and under good control. How you can get it to go away faster, see a board certified dermatologist, pulse dye laser, KTP laser, and even IPL can help calm these down and help them go away way faster. And in the meantime, continuing your acne treatments likewise can help in hastening the resolution of post-inflammatory erythema, especially prescription tretinoin because it helps to strengthen the deeper layers of the skin. It helps with healing the damage in the deeper layers of the skin, including those dilated blood vessels. If you have acne and a tendency to heal with persistent redness, whatever you do, don't pick your acne because that is gonna make it more likely to heal with a persistent mark, whether it be redness or discoloration. And of course, sunscreen and sun protection is key because UV rays from the sun, including the UVA rays that come through window glass as you're sitting by a window, slow the healing process down and damage those deeper layers of the skin. So ongoing sun protection is imperative. Number three, rosacea. Rosacea is a really common skin condition. It consists of episodes of flushing and blushing at first, it's intermittent redness, and with time, as the condition progresses, it can remain persistent. You can have little pimple-like bumps, and this is most often triggered by UV exposure. It can happen as a result of consuming hot liquids, irritating skincare products, spicy food, stress, but every individual with rosacea differs in terms of what their triggers are. If you are dealing with rosacea, I suggest keeping a diary of your triggers because moving forward, avoiding those triggers is going to be key. Now I have videos all about rosacea and tips for rosacea, so definitely check those out, but this is a common reason for persistent facial redness. You can see a board certified dermatologist and rosacea treatments can help control the inflammation in the skin that leads to that redness. And uh, lasers also can help clear up that redness. So the pulse dye laser, the KTP, they're gonna target the blood vessel component of the rosacea and can help with persistent facial redness. If you have rosacea, keep your skincare routine really basic. Sunscreen is essential because again, UV rays trigger flares, a gentle mild cleanser, and a bland moisturizer. Irritating skincare products are very poorly tolerated in people with rosacea, including many exfoliants. Of course, it varies from person to person, but the safest approach is to keep your routine as simple and basic as possible and not, not chase after a lot of trendy ingredients. Some ingredients like fragrances, including menthol, can actually have a vasodilatory effect, worsening redness. 
Number four is allergic contact dermatitis. I talk about this all the time in my videos, but it is a reason for facial redness. You have developed an allergy to an ingredient that you come in contact with. It may be something in your skincare products, but it may also be something that you use to clean your home. It may be something that you're exposed to at work. It may be something that you use in your hair care products. Allergens in skincare products that are most common include fragrance, certain preservatives like methyl isothiazolinone. This is something that stumps a lot of people because it can happen to you an ingredient in a product that you've been using for years. So you may not make that connection that you have developed an allergy to a certain ingredient. Usually the rash appears a day or so after you come in contact with the allergen and it can happen most often where exactly where you have come in contact with the allergen. So say for example, you're allergic to something in your blush, you may have contact dermatitis on your cheeks. But that's not always the case with allergic contact dermatitis because skin at certain body sites is thin and more vulnerable to developing rashes to ingredients that you are allergic to, specifically the eye, eye area. So a common presentation of allergy to uh, gold, for example, is an eyelid dermatitis because you are touching your eyes and transferring that allergen to your eyes. How do you know if you have allergic contact dermatitis? Well, it doesn't get better unless you avoid the allergen. So in order to figure out what you are allergic to, you have to see a board certified dermatologist for something called patch testing to determine what ingredient you are allergic to. And then you have to avoid it, simple as that. Number five is irritant contact dermatitis. This is different from allergic contact dermatitis and that basically you develop irritation to either an ingredient or a product overall, something that comes in contact with the skin. But it's not just skincare products that can be irritating. Household, care, household products are irritants. Dishwashing detergent is a common irritant. And irritant contact dermatitis, in contrast to allergic contact dermatitis, it will cause a rash in pretty much anybody, provided you are exposed to it in sufficient quantities and perhaps under certain conditions. So conditions that lend themselves to irritation are anywhere we have skin on skin contact, like under the arms, for example. But when we're talking about the face, skincare products are common culprits in irritant contact dermatitis. Some skincare products are intended to exfoliate, exfoliate and they cause a localized irritant reaction. With irritant contact dermatitis, it's not even just an ingredient or a product. Sometimes it's simply using too many products. This is why I stressed out you guys to keep your routine simple because the more products you use the more likely for an irritant reaction because you're just using too much. It starts to compromise the health of your skin barrier whose function it is to keep irritating stuff out. And then you end up with an irritant contact dermatitis. Say you're layering a bunch of serums. Some of them have irritating ingredients, maybe even fragrance, which can be irritating in addition to an allergen. So you can see how keeping it simple is, is the best approach. Like my tip for rosacea, keep your skincare routine really simple and really bland. Just switch to a mild fragrance-free cleanser and a bland moisturizer and sunscreen for sun protection. All right, number six is sun damage. This is more common in older adults. It's more obvious in those with a paler skin type. UV rays, because they damage the supportive framework of the skin, that lends itself to a lot of vasodilation and persistent redness. So you may notice, for example, in older Caucasian males have maybe persistently red cheeks with a lot of dilated blood vessels. This is a sign of sun damage. And it kind of looks like rosacea, but it is persistent and it's not necessarily aggravated by things that come in contact with the skin. There are no symptoms of stinging or burning like with rosacea. There's not really any flakiness like with seborrheic dermatitis. 
Laser procedures like pulse dye laser can help improve the look of sun damaged skin and ongoing use of a topical retinoid likewise can be helpful because retinoids help to improve the strength of the deeper layers of the skin and heal that damage and boost up collagen production, improving the look of sun damage, including persistent redness. Number seven is topical steroids. All right, topical steroids, a lot of people actually are phobic of these. What are they? They're a medication that we prescribe, or you can buy one, you know, a weak one over the counter called hydrocortisone. Um, they're used to treat a variety of skin conditions, but for a certain amount of time. If you use a topical steroid too long, there are risks, there are side effects, and one of them is persistent redness. And the face is especially prone to this. This is actually a common problem. People self-treat with a topical steroid that maybe they got in the past, they develop a rash, and they self-treat it with that topical steroid and they keep using it. And the steroid calms down whatever inflammation they have. But as soon as they stop, they get a rebound worsening of redness. I'm gonna list some common ones down below in the description box, but if you've been ever given a prescription for a cream and you still have it around, don't just self-treat with that later on down the road. Make sure that it's A, still okay to use it. Find out what exactly it is because there are potential risks and side effects with self-treating, especially in the case of topical steroids. And persistent facial redness is an adverse effect from prolonged unnecessary use of a topical steroid to the face. Now, for some people who really need some control of inflammation in their skin, say they have eczema, and so for those folks who you know benefit from using a topical steroid, the goal is to wean them off of it to either just be using moisturizers and avoiding triggers of their eczema or to switch them to a steroid sparing medication. Now, in the case of eczema, we have a lot of new medications that we can give that are steroid sparing, but there are alternatives is what I'm getting at to topical steroids. So A, don't self-treat with one, and B, see a dermatologist if you have a problem that is addressed by a topical steroid and you've been using it for a while. Uh, just make sure that it's okay to continue using it or you know, maybe it's time for you to switch to, to something that would be steroid sparing to spare you of any potential adverse side effects from prolonged use of a topical steroid. But I wanna emphasize that topical steroids are not bad or scary. There is a lot of topical steroid phobia out there that is not you know, necessary. They are safe, but you should only really use them under the supervision of your dermatologist. Number eight might surprise you, but facial redness can come just before a migraine. About 70% of people who deal with migraines have prodromal symptoms of flushing, redness. They can develop redness in the eye, tearing of the eye, a swollen eyelid. In some cases, their ears turn red. And the redness, you know, it resolves once the migraine goes away. It's not permanent, but that is another reason why you may have facial redness, is it can be a sign of a migraine. There's actually a study that shows a link between having rosacea and having migraines. That's really interesting. This can often be accompanied with a sensation of a fullness in the ear. And the redness, it actually starts out in many cases as turning really pale and then you get a flush and then you have the migraine symptoms of a debilitating headache. The treatment for this is going to be seeing a neurologist um, for treatment of your migraine. But you know, if you have migraine headaches and you're getting facial redness that, co that goes along with it, definitely it can be a symptom of a migraine. This redness can also affect the chest and the neck. And again, like I said, the tops of the ears. But knowing that this is a symptom that you're about to have a migraine, I think it can be very powerful. See a neurologist and they can get you on a treatment plan. And just having these symptoms and identifying, hey, I'm gonna have a migraine, that can help clue you into when it's appropriate to take a medication to abort the migraine, which if you've ever had a migraine, it can be, I mean, it will, it can just debilitate you completely. I mean, you have to go in a dark room in many cases. It is miserable. I've had one in my life, never again. I thought I was having a stroke, actually. It was very scary, and then I realized I was having a migraine. All right, number nine is diabetes. Recently, I did a video on what diabetes does to your skin, and if you'll recall from that video, you can have persistent facial redness 
in diabetics. It's called rubiosis. It's actually pretty common and it can happen not only for the face, but like the neck, the chest, and the upper arms as well. And it's thought to be due to the effects of having high blood sugar on the blood vessels that course through the skin, leading to dilation and the formation of what's called advanced glycation end products, basically kind of glom onto the collagen supportive framework and lead to inflammation and persistent redness. Um, now there's not necessarily a cure for this, but when the blood sugar is under better control, this can improve. And last but certainly not least is lupus. Lupus is an autoimmune disease. And by autoimmune, what that means is basically your immune system gets super confused and starts attacking you and it can attack different organs. And in the case of lupus, your immune system can attack a variety of different organs and it can make rashes in your skin. The classic rash of lupus is a facial rash referred to as a butterfly rash. Why? If you take a step back and kind of squint your eyes, it looks like the shape of a butterfly. It involves both cheeks and the bridge of the nose. And it is often li either light pink to bright red and it can last a few hours or a couple of days and it often is triggered by sun exposure. Fortunately, when it goes away, it does not scar, but especially in people with deeper skin tones, it can leave behind some discoloration. There can be dilated blood vessels, but unlike rosacea and unlike seborrheic dermatitis, the rash of lupus does not involve at all the nasolabial folds right here. It will spare that. So you'll get a sharp sparing of that. And that can be a clue that what you're dealing with is more likely a lupus flare. How do you treat this? Well, in the case of lupus, aggressive sun protection is a mainstay because UV exposure, including UV rays that come through window glass can aggravate this disease. And so sun protection is essential, including not only sunscreen, but sun avoidance, wearing a broad brimmed hat, all the behaviors that we talk about on this channel when it comes to protecting your skin from the sun. When it comes to lupus, they are a non-negotiable. You can't weasel out of them. It can put you in the house of pain. You definitely need to see your doctor about this one because there aren't any products that are gonna address lupus besides sunscreen. And uh, in the case of lupus, you know, it, the skin, sometimes it can just stay localized to the skin, but in other cases, it can involve other body systems. And so some monitoring may be needed. So definitely check in with your doctor. And there are medications that can help control the rashes that are applied either to the skin or that are taken by mouth. So yeah, long story short, there are medications that people who have lupus oftentimes need to go on to control their disease. It's a serious, it's a serious condition, not something that you can, you know, stroll into Sephora and find a product that's going to take care of it. Sun protection is a mainstay. All right, you guys, those are 10 reasons for facial redness. But again, I've only scratched the surface. There are many other possible reasons, but hopefully you learned some new ones, maybe things you weren't aware of. Comment below on if you deal with facial redness. I hope you liked this video. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>